also to help you and support you uh, the initiatives of uh, Win Active and Women City. Uh, And welcome to the latest WinActive webcast. It's great to have you on board again. And, and as per normal, we've got a great selection of people to talk to. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce my co-host and that man that everyone calls, hmm, he's very interesting, uh, <laughs> James Robertello. Hi, James. How are we going, Barry? Good to, uh, uh, to be back on again. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And uh, I tell you what, the feedback we're getting is, is really good that... Uh, we're putting these up every day, and uh, about four o'clock, they go up on WinActive and uh, Windham Together websites. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out for them. And and uh, we've got another interesting guest today. But just before we get to uh, to Sean, um, as everyone knows, the aim of these webcasts is is really about increasing communication. We're we're living through a an, an unusual time with COVID nineteen, but it's about how that is impacting the Windham community. And what we're trying to do is just assist and support people to be more active, healthier, uh, meet some entertaining people, and uh, and have a bit of fun, I suppose. So that's right. Yeah, James, would you like to introduce Sean for us? Yes. Yeah, so um, further to all um, all the guests that are, we've had on board for our Win Active webcast, um, I'd like to uh, introduce Sean Rogesh from. Um, the Werribee Basketball Association or the Wyndham Basketball Association oh. now, I should say. I mean, <laughs> the, they've just recently rebranded and, and I'm sure Sean will be able to, uh, to to talk a bit about what that journey's been like now. But um, again, I'd like to welcome Sean to uh, to the Win Active webcast. Thanks, James and, and Barry. Thanks for having me. appreciate it. Um, I was going to correct you, James, but it, it is okay and understandable that we're still having people... Um, make that error. We, we have changed just recently to Wyndham Basketball Association, but we've still got the shirts, so where are we there? You can see on the video. Yeah. So, um, we still haven't got the new shirts, um, so that's how new it is. Um, but the WBA, which we're affectionately known as, doesn't mm. change, which is a, a happy coincidence. What, what prompted the, try, the change, um, Sean? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, Barry, we, we um, are an association that uh, we're coming up to our, um, um, I think we're 50 almost, actually. Um, oh. And so obviously 50 years ago, the area was a, a very different looking area to what it is today um, and very uh, Werribee centric and, and the vast majority of our members and teams and clubs were based in Werribee itself or Hopper's Crossing. Um, that was about the extent of it. Um, and obviously over the last, um, particularly over the last 10 or 15 years, as you guys would well know, um, the region has just uh, exploded and um, is so varied now. and, and all of our um, clubs come from right across the, the region, so we wanted to obviously be, you know, inclusive of all of those and ensure that everybody felt that the association was theirs and when they got to playing rep basketball and our um, higher levels of basketball, the team, you know, they could associate with the team. They, they live in Wyndham. Um, they don't necessarily live in Werribee. So um, for us, for, for now, but also for the next, you know, 25 years as well, um, knowing that, Wyndham um, is growing, but it's not at the end of its growth yet. Uh, very good. And so what role do you have with uh, WBA, Sean? So I'm the marketing and communications um, coordinator, uh, which is uh, quite wide ranging. A few of my uh, workmates often remind me that my main task is to update the Facebook page, but I assure everyone <laughs> that there's more to it than that. Um, you know, we've got um, 5,000, over 5,000 members in any one season and um, over a 12 month period about 12, uh, seven and a half thousand playing members, um, just playing members alone. So it's a huge organisation, um, about half, a bit, uh, over half of those are juniors. So uh, making sure we communicate to all of our players, all of our members um, and all of our senior players as well um, effectively and making sure they know what's on, when it's on um, and, and all the other sort of extracurricular activities we organise outside of just our ordinary competitions as well. So um, it's a huge organisation in the, what, what we do and what we cover. So, um, yeah, there's plenty to communicate about, I suppose. And then that's come to the fore in the last month, as I'm sure everyone could imagine. Mm, brilliant, Sean. What, what sort of uh, 
platforms have you been um, utilising uh, to communicate with the, the Wyndham basketball community um, during COVID-19? Yeah, so in, in the in the, um, in the last, I guess, what is it, the last month and a half or so, um, we've really ramped up. Obviously, we, we use, um, generally speaking, we use social media. So we use Facebook, um, we use Instagram. Um, we've now, thanks to COVID, um, I've opened up a TikTok account for the WBA. Uh, we've, only got one, we've only got one video so far, which was pretty good. Yeah, I, I think I've seen it. If I don't mind saying so, it was certainly um, very well received. Um, <laughs> But I, I do feel a little bit out of my depth on there with um, all our junior members um, much more at home on that platform than I am. But um, so there's sort of the main socials that we, we utilise. We use Twitter as well. Um, we also then obviously have email. Email is still really critical for us in terms of getting internal messages to members. Um, it's probably the most effective on the scale, uh, on the larger scale, uh, more effective than than calling 7,000 people, as you can imagine. Um, the one thing that we've really embraced during the, this last little period has been um, online forums like this. Um, so we've been using Zoom, which is obviously very similar to this software. Um, we've run, we, we have uh, pro development programs for our juniors for different levels. We've run three different ones, one for beginners, one for sort of domestic players, which is um, all of our junior competition wider junior competition and then also one for our rep uh, program. So trying to cater for different levels of players um, and also trying to make it, I guess, as interesting as possible without it being come together to the stadium. So um, we've run sort of 15 to 20 minute online sessions with, with a couple of our really good coaches who've been um, fantastic at embracing and adapting, um, which we've all had to do. Um, and and the, the reaction to those uh, has been really positive, really positive. So we had, I think last week we had one of our sessions had um, 100 kids in there all um, following along to 15 minutes of, of ball handling skills with, with one of our coaches as the lead, um, you know, and everyone looking at a little screen. So it's, as I say, everyone's adapting, but um, it's been really great to see the our community really embrace it and, and hopefully we've um, provided them with um, some opportunities to, to keep active, I suppose. Hey. Sean, fantastic stuff. Something we like to do, uh, and I want to get back to WBA and what you're doing in, in just a minute, but yep. in these webcasts, we like to get to know the person more and understand you and how you're dealing with it. And uh, that makes me questions... a bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, so my, my question to you is, we like to look at the positive. What yep. are you grateful for at the moment? What what and and then James will tell us what he's grateful for as well. <laughs> Not going to dive you in anything, James. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, you sent me through this this question um, earlier today, and it, it did take me aback to sort of sit there and actually think about it, Barry. I, had, I hadn't. I have to admit, I hadn't. I don't think I had um, sort of sat there and considered. But um, one thing that I know that I'm certainly grateful for. I've got a two year old at home, so um, having the working from home, um, thankfully, you know, childcare's been going all the way through. So I've been able to get some work done, but certainly spent uh, a lot more time with her and, and um, interacting with her and, and seeing how she's um, growing, I guess, at that age is, is a unique opportunity that um, we don't always get and we don't always, I guess, stop and, and appreciate that. So that's been one thing for me. Um, and the other thing with, with her has been fantastic. Um, we, we had a Zoom meeting with just a couple of friends and she sort of comes flying in across and doesn't really understand but laughing and giggling and talking and they made the comment that it's lovely to have a conversation where she's present and she doesn't have the worries of the world on her she's just laughing and smiling and, and, and obviously not really conscious of what's going on so um, having that presence close by I think has has helped um, keep me sane through this period and um you know just makes you sort of i guess as you say appreciate the the small things that um that you have and, and make sure that you you're not um, getting too down on on what else is going on i think that's that's the point and um is that you know we can look at the negatives and we can get down about it but just the uh, opportunity you've got now to spend with your, your young child is just phenomenal and uh, time i'm sure in the future when things return to normal whatever normal is <laughs> uh, after this uh you you'll really appreciate no, no, no doubt about that 
Yeah. What about you, James? What are you uh, grateful for today? Uh, today, look, I'm really grateful for technology. I'm not the biggest whiz when it comes to, to technology, as you know, Barry, but uh, we're embracing it here and now. Um, but I think we're very fortunate that we have access to these sort of resources to be able to bring, um, as Sean was touching on, you know, videos um, right inside the home, being able to, to learn from coaches um, here and now um, at the touch of a finger. And, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, only the other day I was trying to, to teach my mum how to how to access Microsoft Teams and Zoom and um, <laughs> to be able to you know do a Pilates class. So um, you know going back a year or two even now that that would have been out of the question. But um, I think we've got to be grateful for um, although we're you know we're at home and um, we're adhering to all social distancing um, measures that uh, we're still connecting um, in this digital age but what about yourself Barry keen to understand what you're grateful for today as well <laughs> well uh, recently it was nice weather and I went for a walk with with the family and I actually just uh, I started with a hoodie on but took that off and was just wearing the t-shirt lived near the beach so we're walking along not on the sand but just the path near the beach and it was just a beautiful day and and once again I wouldn't have done that mm. previously uh, mm. because you would have been at work um, or wouldn't have had time, rush home, work, do stuff or whatever. I had the time. And so while it's not my preferred way of working, it certainly, the, certainly does have some silver linings, I think, um, definitely. And, and we need to keep looking for those. There's no doubt um, pet dogs around the world, around the nation, around the world are <laughs> you know, having a bonanza, aren't they, at the moment? <laughs> I, I tend to agree. I hear my sister's dog is absolutely loving it. So, yeah, <laughs> good one, Sean. So, Sean, um, in this time, we are socially isolated, even though, and James quite rightly talked about being connected through technology, but how are you coping? Like, how are you coping? You're staying at home. How are you filling your time? How are you staying positive? You know, what are you doing to yeah. get through this time? I think that's the one The one thing um, to make sure people, are, you know, this is really challenging. It's not um, that some people will be quite happy sitting at home and, and reading a book and, um, you know, keeping to themselves and others will be, I think, really struggling. And, and I'll probably fall into that latter category a little bit, getting a bit itchy, itchy feet. Um, so I've really had to, um, I guess, focus on, ensuring I am keeping myself busy and, and keeping myself um, happy as well, you know, and, and at peace with it all. Um, so one thing I have done, I went out and bought a Garmin watch um, and, and I've been running, uh, which I had done previously, you know, years years ago, but probably had let um, lapse a little bit. So I've gotten back into that, which has been uh, a nice sort of positive to take out. The other thing I, I've, I've found myself doing is looking for at-home hobbies um, and I'm actually in a two-bedroom apartment, so it's very specific at home inside hobbies for me. Um, but <laughs> but little things you can keep yourself busy with. I know a lot of people have, have taken up to taken to uh, puzzles or, or as you said, James Pilates. So um, hobbies has been one that um, probably I I don't generally partake in, but I've I've started um, either teaching myself or retaking up things that I was doing when I was at uni or things like that. Yeah. Oh. That's, that's fascinating. I reckon it's uh, really good. And we're hearing from a lot of people, Sean, about how they, they're coping and whether it's setting up a routine or, as you said, like going by the, the Garmin watch, you know, and, and, and then getting back into running. It's, it's, it's positive uh, habits that, that we're forming. And, and I'm I, I should point out, Sorry, Barry, I should point out, you, you can go running without a Garmin watch. <laughs> They are expensive, I'll tell you. <laughs> are you sure? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah. That. <laughs> if, if, that would be, that'd be my takeout from, from that experience. Would be If you can go without <laughs> one, go. <laughs> uh, very, yeah, very no, it, it's important. Uh, the scheduling thing is interesting, um, you know, and, and, and on a really minute level, I found it really important for me to continue to get up. And, and, and I know a lot of people are um, growing what they're calling ISO beards. I found it really important for me. I, I shave during the week normally. I wanted to keep that as, you know, I get up and I, I do that. It's my standard way of getting up and, and getting into the day, if you like. So I, I've sort of been careful to um, maintain some normality in my schedule too, where, you know, obviously within reason. 
yeah. Oh, fantastic. Uh, thanks for sharing those insights. Um, James, I know that uh, Wyndham City have a great relationship with Wyndham Basketball. Um, how do you interact and how do you work together? Yeah, well, what we know of Wyndham Basketball is they're the largest participation association in um, in Wyndham with um, wow. with their numbers. So they play a really important role when it comes to providing those pathways for um, kids, adults, women, girls, um, uh, anyone looking to, to participate in, in the game of basketball. And uh, while they're utilising the our wonderful facilities um, across Wyndham, um, we're you know keen to continue that partnership when it when it comes to opening up opportunities um, for those that may or may not have a, have access basketball before, um, and then work on those new initiatives um, when we are able to get back on um, on the court. Yeah. So, uh, Sean, what's the latest intel from Basketball Victoria or from what you know of of when things might start? happening again are you aware of anything like yeah. that? unfortunately there's no uh, you know in, in, we're, we're in the same boat as so many um sports and act and activities more generally that there's no firm um dates really indicatively um so we obviously been guided by basketball victoria and basketball australia in terms of um when we can return and what what um, that will look like uh i know the basketball victoria are really keen to try and get us back going um, basketball more generally um, alongside when outdoor sports get up and going as well. And, and they're looking at all different options um, in terms of, you know, obviously limiting numbers of people in the stadium and, th and those sorts of measures, um, which are, are difficult logistically to work through, but um, we'll obviously be putting in um, place what we need to, to try and get back as quickly as we can. The, the latest update, um, from Basketball Victoria is that there's no activity until at least May 31st, uh, and there'll likely be another update on that on May 11th. Um, right. So whether that, or they'll be reassessing that, I should say, on May 11th, so whether that becomes public or not, I'm not sure, but um, we're, we're definitely out until at least then. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. My, I guess basketball is lucky in a sense that we're a, a 12-month sport. Um, so we have got two seasons throughout the year. So um, if we do happen to lose a whole season, we, we can obviously get going with a, a summer season um, quicker than, than other sports that, that only do one season to a year for six months. So we're lucky in that sense um, that we can get people, um, you know, kids particularly, but, but our senior domestic competitions as well, back on court and, and in action, um, you know, hopefully within within weeks of getting the okay. So... Um, it, it's yeah, we're, we're in limbo. We haven't got firm dates, um, which is is obviously you know difficult. But but we totally understand why that's the case as well because it's such a uh, a moving beast. Yeah, no, fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, Sean, thank you very much for your time today. Um, James, thank you again. Thanks, All Barry. Thanks, time. Sean. Thank you, guys. Appreciate having me on. And uh, look. Guys, stay healthy, look after yourselves and your families and, uh, and uh, keep smiling. We'll catch you later. Have a good one. Thanks, Barry. See you, Thank everyone. You. Bye.